Hey, what is up you guys? It's your boy Wes, aka Senpai, the host of Senpai Streams on Facebook Gaming, and today I'm here to talk to you about the Nintendo Switch OLED. Now, a lot of people have been up in the air as to whether or not to get this Switch. Maybe you already have a Switch and you're wondering, is it really worth the upgrade? Maybe you don't have a Switch yet and you're wondering if now is the time to pick one up. Well, this bad boy comes out on October 8th and it is turning some heads. So stick around, we'll cover everything you need to know about the regular Switch and the newer upgraded model in this video. If you find it helpful, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe for me and I'd really appreciate it. Let's dive in. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be the price difference. Everyone's got a budget, so you know, let's get this out of the way first. So the new Switch is coming in at $349.99 and the old Switch is $299.99. So you're talking about a $50 price difference. Not too shabby. So with that said, is it going to be worth it? Well, you just have to look at all these sweet upgrades to figure that out we're gonna start with the biggest and most notable upgrade first the display this bad boy on the OLED has of course in the name an OLED display unlike its counterpart which has an LCD display if you didn't know LCD stands for liquid crystal display and it functions off of a backlight so a little bit of color and brightness is lost in that also it's not as battery efficient as an OLED screen so is that the only difference we're just getting OLED versus LCD not really. There's actually something much cooler on top of that with the display. So the new display is bigger. You're talking seven inches versus 6.2 inches. And trust me, it makes a difference. So when it comes to the new display, it's actually going to be stretching from side to side and top to bottom across the entire switch. They did not make the switch much bigger. It's only 0.1 inches taller and 0.05 pounds heavier. So it's almost the same size with a much bigger display. How do they do this, you may be wondering? Well, they did this by removing that negative space and bringing the screen out from top to bottom and side to side. So um, much better on the display. However, that said, the resolution is the same. If you're playing handheld, you're gonna be looking at 720p. If you're playing dock, you're going to be looking at 1080p. In addition to the display changing, there is a change in a couple of other little things as well with the handheld unit. Number one, uh, the storage size. This is something pretty nice. The storage is going from 32 gigs to 64 gigs, which essentially doubles it. However, that said, the Switch already did come with a micro SD card slot, enabling you to add several gigs of storage to that bad boy if you so desired. But now it comes standard with twice the storage capacity, so it's a win if you pick it up. So another thing Nintendo was saying that they've done here is they've given the Switch enhanced audio. Uh, there's not a lot of detail on this audio. I'm not too sure as to the specifications of exactly what they've changed with the onboard speakers for the Nintendo Switch, but it is enhanced according to them, so I guess time will tell when the Switch rolls out just how much better it sounds. Another really great little improvement on the handheld is the kickstand. If you remember the kickstand on the original Switch, that thing was flimsy and tiny. It was so hard to get your Switch to stand upright sometimes. And if you're not on a smooth surface, you'll be ready to slam that thing down and break the screen sometimes because it is so frustrating to get it to stay upright. Well, Nintendo finally took note of this after several years and said, my God, we figured it out, a bigger kickstand. So yeah, they threw on a bigger kickstand. It goes about across a, the entire back half of this thing. So now the kickstand is like four inches long, uh, easily supports the switch, whether you're on a smooth surface or not. And it's just so much easier to use. So a really good quality of life change. Also, while we're on the topic of the handheld, you may be wondering, well, is it going to have better processing? No, it's using the same chipset. So if you're expecting, you know, more FPS or uh, faster response times, don't be looking for any of that. Um, you're still going to be running the NVIDIA Tegra uh, 11. So no different chip in this one. The main difference is going to be the 7 inch OLED display compared to the 6.2 inch LCD display. The additional double storage that you'll get with the 64 gigs compared to the 32 gigs and the the nice kickstand. Thank you, Nintendo. Uh, so with that out of the way, the next thing we need to talk about is the dock. But before we get into the dock, one thing that I want to say so far is 
based on these upgrades alone for a $50 price difference, if you play this thing handheld, then it's definitely worth it. If you find yourself playing the Switch handheld more than you do docking it, then it's absolutely a good buy. And if you don't have one, now is a great time to get one. There are some amazing games coming out. Pokemon Unite is out right now. It's absolutely crushing it. Uh, Metroid Dread comes out October 8th with the new Switch. So some exciting games coming out if you're in the market for a Switch. And if you already have one and you're playing Pokemon Unite, <clears throat> shameless plug, um, come down to Facebook and catch me at Senpai Streams. That's facebook.com slash streams from Senpai. I'm streaming a lot of Pokemon Go right now, or not Pokemon Go, sorry, Pokemon Unite right now. And I am absolutely in love with it. So if you like that game as well, come check it out. So let's move on to the next thing, the dock. So the dock is pretty nice. Uh, the new dock, it's not very different from the regular dock and it's funny because they're selling it separately like it comes with the OLED don't get me wrong it comes with the OLED but maybe you have a regular switch and you want a fancy new white OLED dock for your regular switch I, I, I don't know I don't know I, I don't work for Nintendo but um yeah you can buy it if you want it if you don't want the OLED switch and you just want the pretty white dock you can get it uh, but essentially, it's the same thing. There is one upgrade to this bad boy, and that is a LAN port. So now you can plug your Ethernet cable directly into the Switch. Thank God, because the Wi-Fi is horrible on that thing sometimes, depending on what game you're playing. So with the new dock, um, the LAN port is pretty nice. But even on the old Nintendo Switch, you could get an adapter to plug into the dock itself and plug an Ethernet cable into that. Nintendo sold an adapter for $26.99. So maybe it's not worth it just to get the dock. I'm still not sure why they're selling that as like an independent thing in case you want it. I don't know, a little strange to me, but hey, uh, no judge. Uh, the only other difference in that is of course um, the color, because you can get it in white. And, um, oh, there's one more, the back plate. The back plate folds down on the regular dock. This black, the, this back plate, sometimes I can talk, this back plate comes completely off. You can just throw it, you know, I don't care. You know, whatever you want to do with it. Um, not really a very important includement, but hey, you know, it's there. Uh, so yeah. Um, so that's the dock. It's not the craziest thing in the world, but uh, it does have some new benefits. Same charge as well, USB t uh, Type-C. So when you uh, set your switch in there, um, you know, you'll get the same charge and it should last about the same time. That brings me to battery life. Um, OLED screens are more efficient. So usually they're gonna run longer. However, this new screen is actually bigger with that extra inch. So with this newer, bigger screen, even though it's more battery efficient, uh, it takes up more space, therefore will draw more power, therefore equals out according to Nintendo. They are estimating the battery life on this thing to last from four and a half to nine hours, depending on what you're playing. So, you know, if you're playing something really demanding that's using a lot of the Wi-Fi as well handheld, then you'll probably get about four and a half to five hours of gameplay. If you're playing something that's not too insanely demanding and not using the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, then you'll probably get a good nine hours. And that pretty much covers every single little difference. My opinions, my thoughts are, if you don't have a Switch, now's the time. Now's the time. For me, I'm still not completely sold because I always leave mine docked. I stream, you know, I rarely take my Switch out of the dock. So for me, considering that most of the benefits are tied to the handheld unit itself, it's not really the best purchase for me. And if you find yourself leaving your Switch on the dock nine times out of 10, then I don't think you could justify the purchase either, unless you just wanna have the newest thing. And in that case, ball out, man, whatever, whatever you want to do. So that's that. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you do, please hit that like button. You know, I really appreciate that. Many more videos to come. Hope I catch you next time on the channel. Take it easy.